brawls in basketball. We've got local sports. And of course, we have the AFC and NFC championship games coming up this weekend. Oh, man. You know, it's one of those days where it's like we're getting right towards the end of football season. So we're going to have that like February lull. Mm. But we have the Olympics. We have the this Olympics, year. We right. Have we the were Olympics just talking about year. that, yeah. And apparently everybody is fighting in the NBA, so we have a lot to talk about. Um, no, it should be, uh, you know, very. Uh, I want to say we had two good games and then two awful games this past weekend, and now we're down to just two games. Um, you know, you had the Jaguars beating the Steelers, you had the Patriots. In an just, insane game. Boy. We were, we were texting back and forth about this during the game. It was, what, 21 nothing at one point? And we're going, what's going on? And it's like, you just kept feeling like the Jags were going to blow it. The Jags <laughs> were going to blow it. And if they were like three more minutes off the clock. Did they ever give up the lead? I don't think so, They right? did, but there was 45. If they were like three more minutes on the clock, I think the Jags would have blown it. Um, it's just one of those games where he's like, oh, they can't get another touchdown. And then Fournette just runs in for another touchdown or sets up. This up, is so after like, going to the locker room. Where everyone's going, he's done. Ledger, he done. He Ledger, gone. He's done. He's done. He's done. Yeah. Um, no, nah, it was a really interesting week of football, and then there's just a bunch of other stuff going on too. Yep. And, and we'll talk about that. But first, we're gonna uh, begin the show with our show starters. And uh, Dustin, I don't know if you saw what mine was. Do you remember what it said? I don't remember what yours said. It said New Orleans running backs, LOL. And to you, <laughs> what does LOL mean to you? Uh, it means I'm laughing aloud. Are you laughing out loud? Because back in my day, Dustin. LOL actually stood for lots of love before it became LOL. Those New Orleans running backs between Ingram and Kamara, usually there's a power struggle between two running backs. There's just nothing but love between these two. There's something, I think Kamara scored during that game. The first person out there is um, Ingram, and Ingram wasn't even on the field. I think it really has gone well for New Orleans because, you know, they brought in Adrian Peterson to be that other back right. Ingram, and it just completely backfired. And Kamara just had an amazing season. I think both of these guys really do like each other. Um, it's interesting to see Ingram finally kind of grow into that role where he can be a number one, but he's still not quite a number one as far as how good he is. Um, but, hey, a pow, you know, I think we're starting to see the shift in the NFL a little bit where, you know, every couple of years it goes – Got to have a high flying offense, wide receivers, quarterbacks, wide receivers, quarterbacks. We don't care about your defense, fling it. We're slowly starting to see some teams that adopt to the fact that it's like, all right, we need to be more balanced on offense again. Well, are we you seeing? Are you game. seeing that? Are you seeing that? They're the teams that are always at the top are the ones that are balanced. Well, look at the Eagles. The Eagles had the run game. The Falcons had the run game. The Jaguars had. You look at the last four teams that are in your final four right now. The only one that doesn't really have a consistent running game, I would say, would probably be the Patriots because they use a running back by committee. Like, well, you could say that, but they still have. They a consistent also, but they use game. running backs differently. Right. So that's too. not that's not really fair to say. Like, and, and they, they also have the most running backs. They still have four running backs right, on the roster. Like Actually, I think they have five with Tom still, Bolden. They still have like eleven running backs on that roster that are all somehow get fifteen yards a game. So, I so while you don't have your, you have your Leonard Fournette. You know, you have your um, yeah McKinley in Minnesota. Yeah, and even then, I wouldn't even call him a, a strong running back. I would say that he's a good backup running back. You know, I look at him like I look at a, a guy like Alfred Blue in, in Houston in the sense of your run, one running back went down. You got a guy who can come in here and get you 800 yards and be an okay, not a starter, mm. but still a quality running but, back. But the Patriots, there are so many running backs that can just bring so much to the table. You have um, James White, who just continues to score touchdowns. He's becoming like the Chris Carter of running backs. All this guy does is score touchdowns. Touches the ball every three times to a touchdown. And like. then you have um, you have Rex Burkett, who's coming back this week, who was your he was your biggest. A running back of the, of or I think he's more your more stable running back of the year. He yeah. scored eight touchdowns this year. Uh, I think it's I think I read a stat that said in his four years in Cincinnati he only scored four touchdowns. Well, that's the thing. You know, you look at teams like, and then you have and not to even talk about Deion Lewis, who's probably your most dynamic running back because of what he can do. He's got that Le'Veon Bell side to side that that just makes people miss. You, know, you look at a team and you look at some of the teams that missed the playoffs this year. I'm thinking about the Seahawks. I'm thinking about the Packers and. Look out who they got beat by, like the Panthers in that sense of you have to have a running game in today's NFL. You can no longer really rely on your quarterback flinging it 50 times a game. You have to have some type of balance. Because Sure, Aaron Rodgers can fling it 50 times a game, get you 10, 6, 11, 5, get you into the playoffs. But the minute you get into the playoffs, you know, 
it comes about, you know, the teams that look like they're being successful are the teams that with seven minutes on the clock and bring that clock down to two minutes. And those are things that all four teams that are here in the final four right. have been able to do But this to get year. back to my original, it was like, I just feel like New Orleans is really doing it. They've, they've become, they've been very lucky um, because of the, the friendship and the brotherhood that is Kamara and Ingram. Because, I think, you know, and it's funny because you don't really have to go very far to find that same type of brotherhood, uh, I believe, with... Um, uh, with Coleman and I'm going to forget and Freeman, Freeman in Atlanta because they kind of had that partnership too. Now they aren't showing the love that Kamara and Ingram do from game to game, and but they also Philly, you and have, that was all um, last year too. You have oh god, you have Ajay. a Jai and you have Blunt, but again you don't have that like get up on him like excited like excited feature that that Ingram shows to Kamara or no, Kamara no. to him. So I just think it's really funny to actually see. This happened because we ha- we don't see that normally when you have two running backs that are as strong as these guys. One's fighting there's, for touches. There's, there's a power struggle, some, right? And it doesn't seem to be. There seems to be just a lot of like love, a lot of fun, and they're do. I mean, granted, they did lose to Minnesota on a on a freak play, but you know, it was. It's a. I think that it's it's good going forward for New Orleans. Yeah, it's good going forward for New Orleans. New Orleans has, you well, know, the running game aspect anyway. Well, you thought going into this year that oh, their window's got to be closed, right? Their window's got to be closing soon, and. They found some running backs. They found some defense. They were able to get out of the cap hell that they and were Drew Brees in. Can like, still sling it, and you know. You and actually, the, the best part is it's very similar to Brady this year. Brady doesn't have the greatest numbers that he's that he's shown throughout the rest of, throughout he's the. He's making um, the throws when he has to make the throws. Well, right, because he doesn't have to anymore because right. he has a running back, a, like, as you stated, a running back by committee that he can lean on. No, and he doesn't have um, to do that. I think what's even crazier to think about this whole year. Um, with just to kind of get off the topic, but with Tom Brady, I thought about this the other day, is that these guys are going for the AFC Championship. He doesn't have his number one wide receiver. No. Do people still forget? I think people forget that Edelman is, has, isn't, isn't playing this year. He's still, he's still you know, recovering. I think it's just crazy to think about that your number one rice, wide receiver goes down, and yet you're still in the conference championship. And, you know, it just speaks to the fact that I think the running game is going to be more prevalent here in the NFL again. You know, I, I mentioned the four teams. The Titans had the two running back approach. The Chiefs had some running backs on their roster. No, not they had um, they had Hunt, and then they kind of would use Hill as a runner mm-hmm. every now and then. Um, you know, you get into that point where we're slowly starting to go back from the all right, let's go five wide and chuck it to let's get two running backs and let's you know have our play call and be 50-50. Well, if and you let's, get a, you know, if you get a linebacker on a running back, you're doing you're doing quite well in the NFL. So you that, are. and that's what and that's what the Patriots do and that's what the Fal- uh, the Falcons do. Um, and that's what the New Orleans Saints were able well, to kind of mimic thing. this so year you with Kamara. You, you you saw it before they all got hurt on Houston, you know, Deshaun Watson would have one of his running backs go out um uh, oh god, I'm forgetting his name now. Lou? Not blue. Um, the one we got from the Dolphins last Miller. year. Miller would go out and be your runner, and then you'd have Foreman, the guy they drafted in the third round, just you know go out into the flat, yep. take a linebacker. The running backs are more athletic than the linebacker, so you get them in one-on-one coverage, and boom, you got you got yards. Um, it's really interesting to see because the AFC um, or the NFC South is going to be a bloodbath next year. You have three playoff teams coming back at full strength, plus the Buccaneers who will be. Who are expected to do better this year than they were. Who will be so, better than they were last year, definitely. Or Jameis will be not the starter of that team anymore. So let's uh, continue with show starters. Let's go into basketball. We're going to get into plenty of NFL this, this hour. So let's go to basketball. And yours uh, revolved around the Clippers and the Rockets having so mine, a quite altercation. Mine is two-pronged. I do just want to mention, uh, if, you're, if you're watching today, I'm wearing a Colorado Avalanche 20th year anniversary jersey because for the first time since I actually 2006 thought when I saw it, it was a Chicago Cubs jersey for the first time since 2006 confused. my it's hockey the same team sea. has a this is actually the Colorado State flag but anyway it's the same sea as the Chicago Cubs I'm just anyway saying. for the first time since 2006 yeah, that. does that work but for the first time since 2006 my team has a six or seven game winning I don't know what the exact number is but it's the first time in a so decade. celebrating something that you're not sure is accurate. First time. <laughs> I think it was seven after they won the other night, to be um, exact. But first time in a long time. My hockey team doesn't suck. So What's their record? enjoyable. They are currently like 25. They're one point out of the wild card spot last year. Or this year. Last year? <laughs> this year. Last year they only had 48 points. They've already eclipsed their points total of last year. They were so one it's, of a the season, it's a good if season. It's a good season. If you get it's, better than last season, it's still a good it's season. It's better than last season. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. And now, uh, talk about the Clippers and the Rockets. Your hold me back fight of the week in the NBA 
Chris Paul led the Chris Paul led the uh, Rockets through a secret tunnel to the Clippers locker room. It was room. the regular tunnel that the players usually put their stuff or they put their food or bags or anything like that. It's not a secret tunnel. I just found it hilarious that after the game that there was a fight that well it wasn't even a fight it was an altercation where you know security was no punches were thrown or anything but it was just the petty drama there between you know the Clippers and the Rockets. We'll give some context to it. So you have uh, Blake Griffin and was it Mike D'Antoni having yeah. an altercation? They had an altercation in the on, game. Uh, during the game, Blake Griffin said some words to him. D- D'Antoni said some words to him as well. There may have been a touching of Blake Griffin to the coach or something, maybe a, a, a brush or something like that, uh, to which um, I'm going to forget his name. Trevor Ariza. Uh, had some words to say. Then you also had... Uh, uh, Rivers, Austin Rivers, get into it as well. Who wasn't even playing in the game? Uh, he had a, a boot on his on his uh, on his foot, and he was, you know, dressed to the nines and still talking trash. And then after the game, you had the players go to the Clippers. Was it the Rockets? Right, go to the Clippers. Rockers go to the Clippers uh, locker room and actually get into the locker room and have some some uh, very choice words. Well, you know, it was the first time Chris Paul has ever left led a team anywhere. So, you know, they, they have that going. That There's a, a lot of going on with Chris Paul saying that he, of all people, this is the last person that should have done this. Oh, yeah. Because he's the president of the Players Association. Yeah, it's a really bad look. <laughs> if the president of the NBA PA is going and kicking down locker room doors to, you know, get in the fights of people, that's not a good look at all. You don't think that's taking charge? That's what I, that's how I was like, I was like, listen, he's taking it into his own hands. You didn't pay your union dues, let's go. <laughs> no, I just found it hilarious, and I found um, Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Barkley's reaction hilarious on Inside the... Uh, very funny. Because they were just laughing about how the LAPD had to get involved, and, you know, NBA fights have just gone, you know, Greg Popovich had a great quote about it. He was just like, NBA, you know those hold me back fights? Yeah, the last time there was a good fight was that one a couple years ago at the Palace. Like, Greg Popovich still thinks it's 2007, apparently, because, you know, he quoted the Malice at the Palaces a few years ago, which was like 2004, I believe. Um, but it's just hilarious that NBA players, you know, they talk all this trash, they think they're super tough, and they're really not that tough. They're not. I haven't seen it. There's no, you, you know. Try telling Blake Griffin he's not tough. Blake Griffin broke his hand. I mean, hand good for you, because, like, you're area. a little taller, but. No, Blake Griffin is way taller than he's. I'm saying, yeah, but you're a little taller than I am, so yeah. like at least like you kind of match up a little better. But like if I were to tell Blake Griffin, he'd hit me tough, one. He hit me once, and then he'd break his elbow or something. Blake Griffin also going to be in a new movie, I think, coming out in a few months. Uh. And the trailer of him sound, looks hilarious. Does it? Yes, he actually looks good. But I've actually liked his commercials for years down the line, anyway. So um, Blake Griffin has been enjoyable for to a point. To off, a point. Out, off the court, yes. Off the court, yes. <laughs> the court, yes. Not so much he's on the such court. A baby. Um, I, I, when I see the, this type of fight, it's not. This doesn't seem like a big deal to me. I, I know it is a big deal, but like, let the players just try and work things out after the game because we clearly, the the audience itself doesn't want fights during the game, and the the associate doesn't want fights during the game. So if they have to do it after the game and in the locker room, let them do that. It's closed off to the media, so who cares? Let them let them discuss what and needs to I'm be discussed. I'm not getting my money on league pass. You're not getting fight. your money, but the, the league is getting what it wants, and it's not <laughs> having altercations on the court. I don't know. I think hockey fights coming to basketball would be really interesting. That'd be great. I'd like to see five minute majors. They just drop their headbands and go at it. Right? <laughs> they drop their headbands. Then you have to have them sit on the bench for five minutes while the team gets to play five on four. <laughs> I think penalties in the in the NBA would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Better than fouls. Like, oh, personal foul. Okay, uh, one minute in the box. Two over minutes here. for roughing. Yeah, <laughs> one minute in the box. Now it's five on four. <laughs> That's great. I mean, the team, a team that can't do very well, like you'd have, Los Angeles would be doing great right now. I mean, the Magic would might the Magic, the Magic might, might have, have a, chi- a, a win or two, right, Bryce? Right. So um, we're gonna stick with basketball because I wanted to get into a couple things. A big one that's going on right now for Boston, the local news, is the whole Isaiah Thomas tribute video. So for those who don't know, they were going to play an, an, a tribute video for Isaiah Thomas a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago when the Cavs came to Boston. And they decided not to do it because Isaiah wasn't playing. Now, he played the night before in his, ho- in his first game back. Mm-hmm. JT, you were still wrong. He did play this year. And then 
the next day he decided they were going to sit him because they weren't going to rush him back too soon. They were going, okay, you're playing the first game, not going to play the next game. So because he didn't play, the Celtics decided not to do a tribute video. And they said, and you know a, what? We'll do it the next time you come It was down. actually at request of IT because he wanted his family to be there. Right, so. he wanted his family there. He and wanted the Celtics were like, sure. No problem. Let's mm. do it the next time you come down. Not knowing no, it's no, Paul no, Pierce No, 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 no. It is Paul Pierce night. It is Paul Pierce getting his number retired for the legendary history that is the Celtics. And they're doing it on the 11th of February, I think it is, when the Cavaliers come back. Now, there's been some huge controversy because Isaiah Thomas still wants, again, to have, still wanted his video tribute, but Paul Pierce pretty much said, no, this is about me. This is my night. If you're the Celtics organization, wh what, what direction do you go here? Now, there, are, there already is a decision that's already been made, but like, what, what, what were you thinking when you said, no problem, we'll do it next time, not remembering that it's Paul Pierce? Well, that's the thing. Like, this is not on Isaiah Thomas or Paul Pierce at all, and the fact of the matter is. I think it became one. This is, this is a Celtics, this is somebody in the administrative department of the Boston Celtics not checking their Google Calendar. This is a very preventable mistake. You could have just checked your Google Calendar and realized, oh, the next time the Cavaliers play the Celtics, these things, are, these things are planned out way in advance. It's Speaking not, of way in advance, how are the Celtics not playing on March 4th? Because that would have solved all your problems. Paul Pierce Knight is on 34. Three, four. I mean, I, come on, people. Like, this I isn't mean, hard. It's not hard to make a schedule. It's just, just, just do that that way. So, I just, I, I, part of me wants to agree with Paul Pierce here and say, yeah, you should, so, it should be your so, night. Yeah, to bring it around, Isaiah Thomas said, I don't want the video on Paul Pierce night because Paul Pierce made a big, a big ta-da that I don't want this happening on my night. I don't want you to take two minutes during whatever part of the game it is, the, you know, the middle of the third quarter during the TV timeout. I don't want a video of Isaiah Thomas because this is my night to celebrate. And I agree with him. I agree with him, but I also disagree with him. And I agree with that it is his night and that he's, he, you know, he's a Celtics legend. He's one of the greats for the Celtics. With that being said, this guy, Isaiah Thomas, helped get the Celtics through a time where they were rebuilding after the big three. And also, you know, his sister died and he had a bad hip last year. And he came out and played in that playoff run. And I think... I don't think... You can't take anything away from that. I get that. But he didn't, he didn't really do anything he didn't for the really Celtics. He didn't do anything. Yes, he kind, of, he kind of brought, like, the spirit up for the Celtics. Like, that's, that's not... Um, I'm not d disputing that. But he didn't win a conference final. He didn't take your team to the finals. Yeah, he was, like, the king of fourth quarter last year. And he was an all-star. But he didn't really do anything to the team to, to progress. The, the only thing they, he, he basically did was build his stock up to get Irving over here. And I thought I think that's a big thing to do for the team. Um, I, I just, I think, I don't know. I really wish it could, because if I was in this situation, if I had a great career and if I had NBA championship rings, I'd be like, two minutes in the middle of the third quarter is not something, like, it's not going to take away from Paul Pierce tonight. Like, uh, everything... Everything that Paul Pierce gave over a lifetime of playing for the Celtics trumps by far whatever Isaiah Thomas did last year. Because remember, Paul Pierce also won you a championship. And, uh, I mean, everybody's won the Celtics a championship, it feels like. Um, nope, <laughs> they haven't. Isaiah Thomas has not. So not everybody. So does, uh, does, does the And Red nobody Mamba, on the roster currently has won the Celtics a championship. Does the Red Mamba get a championship night, too, because he won them a championship? If he ever, I think um, they've had tribute videos, tribute videos for these guys, though. Because you got to remember, Brian Scalabrini is also part of the production team and on-air talent for the Celtics. So, yes, we've seen his face plenty. So don't worry about giving him a tribute video. I don't know. I'm not. He talks about him, his career enough when he's on the air. <laughs> his, his five minutes a game. Um, <laughs> no one shot a three-pointer like Brian Scalabrini in the corner. <laughs> Robert Ory this is my counter Go ahead. That Go argument. on. Um, I don't think two minutes is too much. I understand why Paul Pierce would be mad about it. But I also think a lot more blame should be going to the Celtics on who, who made this mental error. I think it's, it's upsetting that it had to come down to Paul Pierce and Isaiah talking about it. Yeah. It and should it, have been the Celtics that said, you know what, I know you want your family here, but we're going to run your tribute video tonight because the next time you guys are here is Paul Pierce's night. Right. And we don't want to trump that. That's not fair and, to him. And, and, and Isaiah Thomas, you know, he could have come. He didn't have to play. Like, you didn't have to he play. He didn't play. Me. Like, and I think that's what they should have done. And I think, you know, you know, decision's been made to go with Paul Pierce, you know, and only not, you know, have And that, that's a valid decision. It just kind of, I don't know, it just feels a little... It just feels cheap that 
the Celtics couldn't figure this out. Like, you're a professional NBA franchise. But it's okay that it doesn't happen this year. It can happen next year. I yeah. feel like they're also trying to rush the fact that, like, thank you, Isaiah, thank you. It's like, listen, he's not going anywhere. No. He's very young. He's going to be here for a he's while. Be 30, like, next year. So he's he, got five or six years left. He's going to be here next year. You can do it then. The other part, too, is when they announce his name during this game, it's not. It's going to be it's like its own tribute. They're going to That's announce the thing, his starting. Like, gonna, Here's your starters, LeBron James, boo. Isaiah Thomas. The place is going to, the, the, place, place the roof is going to come off. So and, this is what I'm saying. This isn't, it's not a necessarily a bad thing that they're not having a, um, a tribute video because I think it's going to be crazy anyway once Isaiah Thomas goes in the game or gets announced or anything like that. Yeah, and I think, I think that'll be enough for this. You know, it's unfortunate that they can't give him a two, you know, a 30 second to a minute tribute video, but it's, it's a scheduling error. Those things happen. So, I'm not. I don't. I don't think it's something to be as hung up as as, as ESPN. The um, the uh, overhype everything machine has been hyped. Like they've they've dedicated like three days of radio to this, and it mm -hmm. just amazes me. I tried listening to one. I tried listening to one ESPN radio show last night or Good yesterday, luck. on the radio, not the podcast format. Right, nine minutes of pure ads before, and it was like a. 30 second sports center update in there and I was like this is awful the the bad part about the about ESPN radio right now is that there's you there used to be like you know on the on the half hour you could turn it on and it'd be a new thing starting but it seems like the commercials go into like three or four minutes in welcome to the shell pens are presented to you by Twinkies and hostess and on 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 our Twinkie hostess on the subway line, fresh hot take presented line. to you by subway and advanced auto parts is presented to you by NFL network and Hanes underwear is Yay, Cole like, Reeds. Like, Another yeah. basketball thing I wanted to get into, too, was uh, storming the court. There's a big controversy with uh, West Virginia and Texas Tech. Texas Tech, number nine, uh, trumped West Virginia, number two, uh, by one point, and they stormed the court. Now, they stormed, now, and then there was an altercation with one of the players. He now is suspended, I think, for one game because of it, because he basically punched a fan because he wasn't able to get to the locker room um, because there were thousands of fans that were there. So what my question to you is, storming the court, can we just be done with it? Is this, is this a fad that can go away like the wave at a baseball game? Well, like, like, it doesn't need like to happen? Last night, SMU defeated number eight, Wichita State. SMU unranked, top ten team. He stormed the court at that point, I think. Yeah. I think if it's, I think it's yeah. a big victory, but it's just it's one of those things where if you do it every time your team... Like, it's one of those things that I, I associate storming the court with an upset in the sense of, like... This right, is but a, nine it, versus two isn't an upset. No, you, it's not. And you had said at the beginning of the show it kind of was because it's a team well, that hasn't done well. And I want to just want to confirm that um, while we talk about this, that because I thought Texas Tech basketball was bad last year, so I was kind of shocked to see them in the top ten. Um, and like, if you're having a good year, if you're finally having a good year after like, um, and you had kind of joked, you said like, well, what about like. Um, in the national championship where people are getting stuck in bushes because they're trying to get onto the court and stuff like that and onto the field for football. And I think there's a time and place for everything. The middle of the season, facing a nine versus a two, when you guys really aren't different in the, in the standings here, isn't the time to do it. The time to do it is, again, during like March Madness, during the national championship. Also, just for instant karma, Texas Tech lost last night to Texas. Just, just, just as that makes you want to warm yourself. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So this was a few days ago. Right. It wasn't like, last night. And it's happened. just one of those things where it's like, and did Texas restore the court? Did they get to storm the court? I don't know if they stormed the court, but like mid-season games, like if it's, it's a, like, for me, it's a safety issue. Like you don't have, you're not prepared for this, as as an organization, as as a program, or wh whoever's running the the facilities there. You're not prepared for someone to storm the court every time because it's not something you should have to prepare for. No, and I think there should be times where you can prepare. You know, if like your biggest rival is in town and you're not a top twenty five team, and you you know, I feel like the only time I would be okay with this is if it's like two top fives, and they're already rivals. Like if Michigan facing Michigan State. Well, I think I'm, like, Michigan, well, I think if Michigan faces Michigan State, regardless of. You know, if one team is ranked in the top ten, and regardless of where the other team is ranked, if they if the other team wins, I think like I think you save it for big upsets and big rivalry games. Like if you just win, if you clinch the Big Twelve championship with that win against West Virginia at home, you start you, you just clinch the championship. Like that's where I kind of like I get into that. Like maybe the championship part of it makes sense to me, but even the, even as I'm saying that Michigan versus Michigan State like a top five, I still hate it. 
I, I don't think it has any place in basketball right now. I think you should just be done away with it. Let the fans stay where they're supposed to be in the stands. They don't belong on the court. That's why they're not playing. So and like storming the court is different in football because it's it's a much larger field. But the only time you ever see that is in a national championship. Well, you saw it during the um, or the Iron or the Bowl. or the bowls or something like that. You saw like, it during Iron Bowl, like that. That. But that's like the last game or of the, the big season. Upsets like but it's the last game of the season. It's different. It's yeah. not. I mean, they yes, they do this on the national championship. But I think that's the only time because that's the biggest of stages. Like, I'm okay with it. In How about the sports cases? you don't see this in? Like, you don't see this in baseball. You don't see this in, in, profe- you don't see this in professional sports. No, you don't see Well, you don't. When was the last time you saw a, a mob on a hockey rink during the, during the NHL well, you see playoffs? Hat, well, you see hats in the, for a hat that's, trick, oh, like, that's fine. If these st- players want to throw their popcorn and hats on, on their foam fingers on the, on no, the, you don't on see the court, I'm sports, fine but, with but that. This is, that's one of the things that makes the college product different than the than the. This is the part that makes it annoying. This is why people don't take the college uh, sports seriously is because of things like this. Well, if you want to talk about it, nobody's watching college basketball until mid-February. Like, nobody's paying attention. Did you, actually, was. did you actually watch that game? No, of course I didn't watch <laughs> the game, but I saw the you highlights of it. Watch Texas Tech versus West Virginia on a Tuesday night. I think the only person I've seen, I can't even remember the guy's name, was, is it Trey Young? Yeah, Trey Young. That's the Young. only person I've seen because he's on every single highlight that ESPN can can create. No, I, um, ugh. Um, no, I, I... I think it should be saved for special occasions. I don't think it should be, you know, gotten rid of. We've seen it here locally. We've seen uh, MVU versus BFA. I think it was their, uh, was it the last game of the season? BFA won on, on free throws or something like that. This is last year. And the, 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 the students stormed the court, and the game wasn't over yet. This is what I'm talking about. Like, it's not necessary. No, it's not. It's not, let the, go crazy in the stands. That's where you belong. You don't so belong on the court. The stands, you have to give people like three or four minutes to get off the court first too. Especially if it's basketball. Like, right. if everybody's off the court and then you storm and it's safe to storm. It's like, a little different for high school because they're not taking up the entire court. Yeah. This is thousands of people yeah. coming from the stands and just filling in a space that's made for like, what, a couple hundred? If, if everybody's comfortable and not touching each other, it's a couple hundred people within this this room. Yeah. Um, so that's why I say I think do away, like there should be penalties. And there is. They're, be, they're being fined. I think the university isn't being fined enough, in my opinion. $25,000 because of it. Well, that's and one a of player is being so. suspended because he felt unsafe in, in, the, in, the, um, in the environment that was around him. Well, and that's one of those things where it's like... Um, you know, every every time you storm the court, even if it's a football field, they, you still pay a fine. It's just the athletic department will cover the fine most of the time because of, you know, big win. Um, but no, that's that's my thought. Like I don't have the I don't have the standard get off your you know, your dad take on it or get off my lawn. But I think it has Definitely to be get saved. off my lawn. Get yeah. off my court. It has to be saved for special occasions. You can't do it in a mid January game. With two top I think that's teams. what I think that's what irked me the We've most. We've had which that's have me the most. no history of a rivalry whatsoever, mind you. Like no. West Virginia and Texas Tech. I don't even know if it was a buzzer beater. I think like, they just won. No, and it's just kind of like it, there's no. There are there are definitely little things that I would put in there to say like you know what it's okay to storm the court, but but they all have, it's like it's like the moons, like, the, the stars. They have to align perfectly. Like the list of is it okay to storm the court here. None of those things were checked off for this game, which is why I wouldn't storm the court for this it's game. Like, it's like, like on the verge of like when Clemson, what were they, number two, and they went to Syracuse in, in football, and Syracuse beat them. You like, stormed the court. Like, that's like, a, like, that seems different to me. This is a team that you have absolutely no business beating, but you're on your home field, and you're a terrible program, but you beat the number two team in the country. Thank like you upset the number two team. Yeah. Go wild, go crazy. <laughs> go this crazy. is your you already, national. You already this are. is your national championship game. Like you are in Syracuse. You are not going to anywhere nice this postseason. Like, um, so let's talk about some local sports. Let's get into home field advantage. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit about the BFA girls basketball team on yeah. the top of the charts right now. BFA which, girls if you can remember, basketball. we talked with um, Coach Earl at the beginning of the season. And I had mentioned him. It seems kind of weird that you guys, and I don't mean weird in a bad way, but you guys are always at the top of, you have in the last three or four years. Well, so they continue to do that by making it happen in the regular season. You know, BFA right now, they're 6-2. and two. They are the sixth highest rated team index points-wise in the VPA standings. Um, interesting. With What's BFA their record? Stand. They're 6-2. and two. Okay. And that one, one of those losses came to a Rice team that's undefeated where they led the most of the game. 
This BFA team is really interesting because they are just grinding away. And, you know, Coach Earl has mentioned a lot of times, Coach Earl and Coach DeMar had mentioned a lot of times that this is a young team. This is a young team. Um, and I don't think the expectations were as high for them because of how young of a team they were. And here they are, 6-2, and two, you know, two index points behind. You know, two index points behind South Burlington, who they just lost to the other night, but South Burlington has a player that's going to play at the college level. Um, you know, two index points behind South Burlington. Uh, what they was have, the other team they lost to? Rice, right? Rice. Like, the two losses that they have are to two of the top five teams. Mm -hmm. Like, this would be a fate team if that if they're they can, not losing against the teams... They shouldn't be. And this is a BFA team that has a chance to you know, win 14, 15 games and go on in a little run, you know. They're putting it together. They need a little more shooting, but they play just such... They play such suffocating defense that the basketball fan in me absolutely hates watching their games because it's just so awful for the other team. The defensive, like, fundamentals basketball fan in me is like, this is a lot of fun to watch because this press is executed so well. Um, and I just wanted to mention that because they're 6-2 and two and they're doing well. Uh, other girls' basketball teams up here are not doing as hot. You know, MVU has one win, which is more than most of their other totals. It was like of. one of their first wins? It was like one of the first games of the season? Yeah. Right. Um, and Enosburg is, well, Richford is 1-5 and five as well. And Enosburg, I'm trying to find what Enosburg's record is. I don't know if their girls are D3 or D2. They're D2. Anymore. They're D2 again this year? Okay. Boys, is, yeah. Enosburg is 6-1. and one. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, BFA and Enosburg 6-1, they have a good team. They have some veteran leadership on that team. It'll be interesting to see what type of run they can make. I think it's really cool for Franklin County right now because you have the Enosburg girls, you have the BFA girls in basketball. Uh, if you get to hockey, the BFA boys and girls in hockey, and also the girls uh, MVU hockey team uh, are all at the top of those lists when it comes to the standings. So I'm really excited to see, as we, are, as we have been the last few years, very lucky to go to games at Patrick Gym and and um, Gutterson Fieldhouse because the teams are doing so well. Well, BFA I think we went six to three, for boys hockey. Again. I think we went to three games last three games last year at the Gut and, and Patrick Gym. We did three nights in a row. They got to the point right. where I got sick of being at the, at the gut. gut. Like I was like, I am done with this, Paul. Like I will it, never get sick of showing my press pass at the Gut. I will never get sick of that either. But the, the games in a row. And this year was a lot easier to climb up the stairs without a boot than last year. Yeah, so. you know, you didn't hurt yourself. Good yeah, job. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> for once. For once. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit of a. Uh, uh, our coverage, so uh, we're again we're live for, for uh, all but right now MVU uh, gym for basketball. Uh, we're very excited to be able to bring that to Franklin County and to everyone. We've actually had requests; people were asking us, "Hey, are you guys going to be the girls' game? Are you guys going to be the boys' game?" Um, and we're you know we're happy to oblige and be able to provide coverage. Uh, we had some crazy numbers for the uh, BFA CVU game. I believe that was last year, uh, last week. Uh, while I think it said that 2,100 or something like that people viewed the game at one point or another, um, our post for Facebook, and I thought this was really cool, reached over 20,000 people. That's pretty um, cool. So it's not just us that are, um, it's not just the coverage that we're providing, but it's the people that are watching, the people that are sharing, the people that are, are, are talking about um, our coverage here. And I just want to, uh, you know, give a shout out to people that are uh, supporting us here at Northwest Access TV because we're trying to do you guys a service um, and, and provide uh, a little, uh, you know, something to watch at night that's some live sports because that's what's going on in Franklin County and in the know, winter. It's, and we're excited to do that. You know, the Milton versus Enosburg game, even though we didn't have audio for half of it, had um, 1.4K views, and then the other video of the Milton versus Enosburg game had one point. You know, we almost had 2,000 views on that. Like, there is... And I think the big thing about the views, I know a lot of people say, like, well, well, anyone can just click it for a second. The minutes that people are viewing these games are for they're most of the game. Like, you know, if, uh, if, if almost 2,000 people clicking for a second, that's 2,000 people who have have made the effort to come to our page. And, you know, I've gotten people asking me about games, too. You know, like the Milton community plays BFA. You know, the boys play BFA next week. That's a big game. For we'll Milton. be there. And, like, there are people asking me, so you're doing that game live? There is it's Mil Milton coming to BFA. Right, Milton Yeah, I think it's on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah, we'll be there live on, on Tuesday night. And Milton's again, undefeated at 7-0. Um BFA is a Division One team, should be a good game. But it's like, 
there is a want for this. You know, we talked about this a little bit last week or the week before where, you know, not, there's nobody else really doing this. And yes, at the um, state level, you know, the NFHS has the contract for the finals, but nobody is doing the mid-season January game. And, and NSN, I mean, they've they kind of peaked in from time to time. I think they just did, uh, they did the Enosburg Richford boys game at, uh, a couple weeks ago. Weeks ago. Um, and that was kind of a, honestly, that was a shock to us when we yeah, were no. doing our coverage. Like, wait, who, they're here? Like, you guys, you guys never come up here. And so. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where the games that NFHS really does get the contract for, you know, the finals, people are going to those games. Like, people are not staying home. But when it's Monday night and you want to just watch your kid play or, your, you know, your nephew, your cousin just play a basketball game, you don't want to make the trek, it's really nice to have that live coverage. And I think we have a great team, you know. I think our cameraman has been great this year. You know, we've had Nick oh, and Mason's I doing done Mike, a uh, great job. You, Bryce, and Nick on, on the mics have been fantastic. And, and it's good coverage. very excited. And it's awesome it's to It's fun to pat them. ourselves on the back sometimes. Yeah, it's fun North that Texas the numbers television. are getting bigger. Yes, yeah, it's good to see that we have a following. We're getting the likes on Facebook. So, again, continue to follow us on Facebook if you're watching. Um, and uh, check out what games we have coming up. Again, I, mean, I think we have two great games next week. Uh, I think BFA plays Spalding, if I'm not mistaken, for girls. Um, I don't know if we're taking that one live or if we're taking uh, another game. But, uh, but yes, BFA Milton. versus Milton on Tuesday night, I believe it is, and we'll be there uh, for that game. So it'll be a good one. Yeah. Um, it's, part, it's now time for one of my favorite uh, segments of, of the week now. And we have a fun little new animation for it as well. Oh, we got it's animation. one of those things where uh, I said to Dustin, hey, I think that you should have a segment on the show. What do you think about this? And he said, yep. So this is the second week installment of it. So Dustin, for the second week uh, in a row, please tell me, over this past week, who was just trash? I don't watch the animation, yeah, watch the animation first. So just trash. I love that. <laughs> that is awesome. What you don't hear is a garbage truck sound and also the beeping of a garbage truck. So I love that a lot. Um, my just trash this week, and I really... And please, address, address the audience if you'd like. You, you know, can. I put out a Twitter poll about this because I wanted to see, and I still didn't even agree with the results of the Twitter poll. If you watched our game on Monday night, you realize that there were 42 fouls called. If you've watched an NBA game in the last couple weeks, you've realized that people are getting ejected left and right and all over the place. So my just trash for this week are the zebra stripes. Ooh. Ooh. The zebra stripes, I don't pay admission to come watch you, okay? And whether it's the local level or the NBA level, 42 fouls, 42 fouls, Paul, in, in a... in. Eight, six, six, in a 32-minute game, we were averaging over a foul per minute the other night. And, you know, I just, I understand. And, uh, and it was a, a local girls' high a school. A local girls' yeah. high school game. And then, you know, that same night, somebody in the NBA got ejected because he just went like that. Like, or, you know, it's just, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of referees, you know. We had the, in, you know, Mr. Index card is your Super Bowl referee this this night. So be, be ready to sell out they Staples. Confirm that he, like, won't, he won't be. He won't, he won't have the won't index have cards. Card. It's just like every week I turn in sports, I'm hearing about the referees messing up. And it's just like I'm so sick of it. We have challenges in the NHL and in the NFL that last 10, 15 minutes because we're trying to figure out if a ball moved this much or if a guy's skate was across the line this much. And it's just like, uh, I'm really just sick of referees. I'm really, you know, and I try my best because, you know, at the local level, and this is kind of my plea for this week is if you are a local kid under the age of 30 who's looking to make some extra cash, Sign up to be a referee. We need more referees in this state. We need a ton more. Um, but, you know, calling 40, over 40 fouls in a girls basketball game is just... There's a point where you just have to let them play, right? If there's a point where I it's think like, I actually remember the coverage when you guys were talking about it. It's like, oh, I think they have more than 10 fouls. They stopped at, 10, at counting it on like, the scoreboard just, at just, 10 uh, fouls, which just makes sense because that's the, I think that's the double bonus. You don't only have to count a pass then. But that's, it's, if the counter has to stop... Because of how many fouls there are, I mean, what if it's like a twenty-point game? Do not call ten fouls. Which it was. Wasn't, wasn't like, it like a thirty-point win? For and this BFA? is the thing that gets me: is like, uh, if they were actually hard fouls that like were putting the players at jeopardy, be like, okay, I get it. You have to call. You know, if these were two teams that hated each other, these were two teams that will probably see each other one more time this year. And it's just like. 
calling fouls on everything just ruins the game. It ruins the game for kids. You know, and last night I had a referee say, you know, and it was a freshman game. It was a JV, you know, it was a freshman boys basketball game. Said to the scorer's table, there's no such thing as a moving screen. And I was just like, what? Like, it's like, ah, oh, dude, like. Uh, you know, and I wanted, you know, I wanted so hard. There were so many candidates for trash of the week this week. But, <laughs> but you after, went with the Zebras. You went with, you went after 40 fouls, where am I supposed to go? I didn't think that's where you were going to go. That's where I was going. 40 fouls. I thought number five for Jacksonville is where you were going to go this week. Because no, he played an okay game this week. Oh, he did play an okay game. So we're okay with that now. No, I still think he's a bad quarterback, but he played a good game. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so that's your Just Trash of the Week. Just You're talking referees week. in general. We're going to generalize the referees just like that. I don't pay to see you. I don't want to know my referee's name. And, you know, at the local level, I don't want 40,000 so what's, what's the phrase? Seen but not heard? Seen but not heard. That's what I want. Like, that's what I want. Like, and look, referees, your job is to make sure the game is played fair. Your job Maybe is it's heard sure. but not seen. I don't know. Your, your job is to make sure the game is played fair. And I, I, you know, I won't. When the NFL announces who's refer, refereeing a Super Bowl, I don't even, you know, they don't even need to send out a tweet about it. That doesn't matter to me. It should be the guy who's had the most consistency and the guy who he hasn't is. blown any calls this year. He hasn't blown any calls. He's, he, one, he's the top of his class for referee, and that's how they, that's how they do that. Now, I don't believe referees can do back-to-back Super Bowls, but um, it depends on who's at the top of the class, and he is. I know that he had one of the biggest media, you know, viral media type of outbreaks with the whole index card, but he's still one of but the he best. Did, but didn't he go by the rule book for the index card? Wasn't that, like, in the rule book if you have to, like, if it's down to, like, you have to use, like, an index card? I don't know I that. that. was an NFL rule. Question. I thought, like, I thought he did the right thing on that. It was just funny that he used an index right. card. Um, it's something that no one really expected him to do. So, uh, but he is, and, and honestly, when he's doing, like, a Patriots game, I'm actually excited. I like, I like the way that his crew works. I like Ed Hockley. <laughs> Everyone like, arms. only because he doesn't skip arm day. Never skip arm day. But he skips plenty of leg day. <laughs> uh, so let's get into the NFL. We've got a little less than 20 minutes here to talk about that. Um, and we've, we've kind of talked about the whole, we haven't really got into it. But last week, you had the Jaguars that went into the Steelers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The Jags did host a playoff game, correct? Yes, they hosted a playoff game. Why do I keep hearing that they've won two road playoff, two road playoff games? That's all I keep hearing. I don't know if someone's messing up or not, but they did host a playoff game, and so, then they went to the Steelers and beat them in their own in their so own. So Jacksonville career. is. Uh, it's not. It's we'll start with Jacksonville only because I can talk about this all day. So it's, that's, it's kind of like how San Diego was just on a lower scale. There's a lot of transplants there, right? Like there were a lot of Bills fans that were at that Jags game. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd say about 30, if, if 30% of your stadium is opposing team members and it's your home stadium, it can kind of feel like you're at a road game at some, or at least like a neutral site game. I guess I could see that, but it's still like you were in your home. No, and, anyway, I, let's I, get, I, and I haven't heard that at all, actually. So but. let's get to, let's get to their game. They go into the, into Pittsburgh. They put up 21 unanswered points on Pittsburgh, and everyone's just looking at each other like, "What is what? happening?" <laughs> I was just—I like, don't think my thumbs could move fast enough trying to text back and forth with you guys. I just because saw that every for- time I would text you, they'd score again. I just saw that first drive, like Fournette, just like kind of like the minute Blake Bortles like rolled out of the pocket and was able to complete that like three-yard pass that he wasn't able to complete in the Buffalo game. I was like, "Ah, oh, here we go. This is this is going to be a good first, football but in game." In that first drive, he had two. I think he had uh, uh, not Fournette. But another running back and a wide receiver both go out. I don't know if it was the tight end. This tight end and the wide receiver had to be taken out of the game during that first drive. And all I could think of was like, great, this is great for now, but he's going to get seven points. And that's pretty much it because he's got two players that are out of the game. And uh, I think it was Marcus that. Lee that also that eventually came back in, I think, like a few plays later. But you had a couple players that went down. And you're going, oh, no, never mind. This isn't going to last. No, And it um, did. It lasted for 45 points against the Steelers in Heinz Field. Yeah, I think, well, first off, Todd, let's talk about Todd Haley's play calling for the Steelers. It's fourth and one, and you don't run Todd, a quarterback sneak. Because they don't have a quarterback sneak, Dustin. How do you not have a quarterback sneak? Big okay. Ben confirmed that so, they don't have a quarterback sneak oh. in, the, in, their, uh, in their playbook, which it, is ridiculous. Explain because he's one this of the to biggest, me. He's you, one of the biggest quarterbacks in the league. It doesn't take much for him to quarterback like, sneak. You've you played football, so you know what a football playbook looks like. How do you not have the just fall down forward in your playbook? That should just be a playmaker. That should like, just be like an should, audible. It should like, just hey, be guys, like a, hey, guys. Hey, guys. We're pushing guys, it forward. We're pushing like, it forward. I'm going to go for the He literally sneak. has to have one guy on his offensive line go forward and him go forward. And just he, the center. It's like most, what, QB, what? most QB sneaks you see, it's usually the center and the quarterback. Everyone else is always behind the ball because they, the, the quarterback is telling that center secretly 
Give me the ball. Right now. It's just kind of like, I don't know if that's not in their play, but I don't know. I feel like Big Ben, and this is why I really hate Big Ben. This is, is the second time, in, or second time this year uh, that I've that, that the media has picked up on it that he's thrown Haley under the bus because there wasn't like this play in the two playbook. Two plays, the spike ball. Which if you've ever played Madden, you know a spike ball. It doesn't. Need, these are two plays that shouldn't have to be in the Maybe playbook. Big Ben doesn't play Madden. These are these are two plays that you should just know. Like push forward, quarterback sneak, spike ball. Well, the two things that should be worked on. It's it's it, they're part of the game, and it's not like it's a secret play. It's not like the fake punt that that happens like once a year. This is a it, this, this is, is a, a this is, is a, a, a spike, simple play. and it's a QB sneak. They happen all the time, plays. every like, week. It happens. And I guess to, you know Todd Haley's leaving now, but it's like, boy, take some responsibility. If you're the star quarterback for your team, I don't care where you, you can spike the ball, you can push forward. It is not like, oh, it, just, it just annoys me. That, you know, oh, I'm Ben Roethlisberger and I've won a Super Bowl, but my dad doesn't let me run the ball forward a yard, so we can't run forward a yard. It's like stupid. It's Uncanny. stupid. Canny. I thought I was sitting next to Ben Roethlisberger. It's that just, was it's just, just so like, good. It's just like, oh, yeah, it's the offensive. It's the quarterback coach's fault that I couldn't hand the ball off to the best running back in the league. Like, Still going. Take take some responsibility. I'm gonna have to ask you like, to bring Ben Roethlisberger back one day. I just I just to talk about sports. I just cannot like I just it gives me a headache thinking about how stupid that play so is. So Blake Bortles goes in to Heinz Field, and given the blunders of the Steelers and also the fact that didn't Roethlisberger s- still throw for like four or five mm-hmm. touchdowns in that game as well. Um, and a couple ridiculous plays by Antonio Brown, which shows that he's the number one wide receiver in the league. Um, Blake Porter still beat you at home. Now, it, but a lot of it, I feel like, was attributed to the fact that the Steelers weren't taking the Jaguars seriously. So you had the Steelers that basically saying, we can't wait for Foxborough. We can't wait to take on the Patriots again in the AFC Championship. We can't wait. We're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to beat them and go to the Super Bowl. And then they can't even get past the division around Jaguars because they're not thinking about them. No, they, they didn't got, expect they this got to this happen. They called Insta Karma on football, where right. if you look past now, anybody, now the Jaguars, they've really, um, they've really like, they're eating into this. They, they're saying like, listen, you did, you disrespected us. We're going to punch you in the mouth. How does that work now with the Patriots? Because the Patriots don't do that. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. The biggest fine. thing, the biggest thing that Jaguars were oh, able to feed man. off of was the fact that they were being disrespected. They talked about being disrespected. They went out there. They punched Pittsburgh in the mouth. They survived the fight, and they were able to move. They move on to the AFC Championship. But if the Patriots aren't giving you anything to feed off of, how do you? How do you amp yourself up for this game? I think it's one of the more underrated aspects of the Patriots dynasty. They keep their mouth shut. And this is one of the things that, you know, that Bill O'Brien has brought to the Texans that I've really enjoyed is keeping your mouth shut. You don't talk trash until you have a ring. It's just that simple. Um, and this is the thing with the Jaguars. Yeah, you know, you, you beat the Bills. Yeah. All right, you beat the Bills 10 to 3. And then you beat the Steelers because your running back is going to be a top five running back. If he's not already, you know. He is already. Leonard Fournette. He was this year, I think, in fantasy. Leonard behind Fournette a few. Just, it's just the next generation of star running back. But the Patriots do a really good job of keying in on your star, wide, a star player, whether it's a wide receiver, or running back, or tight end, and limiting them. You want to know? And you know, you want to know? If they do that, who are, you, who are you turning to, Jaguars? You're turning to one man. Who has a 53% completion percentage this postseason. Like, 52.2 against the Bills, 53.8 against the Steelers. He had to go against Blake Bortles. Who's throwing to who? Who's the only throwing? person I know is Marquise Lee. Who is like what? So who else is a superstar on that team that's going to elevate you past the New England Patriots and, that are considered one of the best offenses in the league and quietly one of the best defenses the in the Jackson, league? Because the they, they're between defense. the 20s, between the red zones... They're one of the be- They're they're one of the worst teams in the league. Once you're in the red zone, I just the Jacksonville it's a shut down Jaguars defense. have um, their defense is writing a lot of checks that their offense cannot cash. Calvin right Smith now. said this week that he doesn't think the Patriots are respecting the Jaguars. The Patriots no. haven't come out and said anything. So this is where I wanted to go with it. Was now you're just reaching. You're Whatever reaching. you had to tell yourself to get ready for this game, go ahead. But the Patriots aren't doing that. So one. This is your first winning season. I think season. Eric Rowe said, sorry, I think Eric Rowe ended up saying, like, you 
you shouldn't, basically, you shouldn't do that. Basically, what you said, you shouldn't cash uh, checks you that you can't. You can't write checks that you can't it's cash. It's not like you have Aaron Rodgers in your backfield. Like, you have Blake Bortles who... Well, there's nothing wrong with Blake Bortles. No, He's a decent not. athlete. You got a game manager quarterback, okay? Like, that's fine. Game managers can get, you know, he's done a very, you know, we've gone back and forth on this. I, I've said more than a thousand times that Blake Bortles is a trash quarterback. He is slowly evolving into a game manager quarterback. Is he going to be a top 10, top 15 quarterback in the NFL ever? I don't think so. Can he get a team with a good defense to the playoffs? Good defense, you could do that. They've, they've, been, right. they've been quarterbacks that have done that before. Tom Brady did that the first four years he was with the Patriots. Uh uh, what's it? Russell Wilson did that with the, with um, the Seahawks as well. They have a defense that just trumps everyone. Hey, Trent Dilfer has a Super Bowl ring, yeah, and Trent. it's not because he's a top ten quarterback. <laughs> you mean to tell me that? You mean to tell me that Trent, Trent Dilfer is not elite? Um, <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I um, and I've actually really enjoyed Blake Bortles speaking to the media. I enjoy him as a person, and I really do want to because root you for feel him. for him. I, and I really do want to root for everyone him as is a literally player. calling like, him trash, including yourself. Yeah, I you know I have. I've and you, I feel like you didn't have a reason to call him trash because his numbers aren't as bad as you think they are. He's just in the situations that make him sound like he's trash. And I think or people you know, cue in on the the missed plays that he has and call him trash. But his his numbers are actually pretty good. His numbers are okay. He has he's the man. He's how been, how okay do you think his numbers are? Well, I'm looking at his numbers right now. Um, how about I, how would I do? You, how, okay, show me numbers. Are you looking over his his career? His career. I'm looking Go at ahead. his career. And he's got a uh, 59% completion percentage. Yep. 14,000 yards. Okay. 90 touchdowns. Okay, that's great. 64 interceptions with an 80.8 rating. So it's uh, funny that you say it because I feel like there are other quarterbacks that have similar numbers to that during their first four years. Zach, could you please bring up the graphic and I'll bring it here just so Dustin can get oh, a look at it as well. Oh, you got a graphic. So the first four years of Tom Brady's career, averaging 24 touchdowns, 300, uh, 3,400 yards, 13 interceptions, 61.8 completion rate, and an 87 rating. Let's look at Mr. Blake Bortles here. 24 average touchdowns a year, 30 more <laughs> yards than Brady, a few more interceptions. That's not a big deal. Completion rating, a, a per, two percent points, and then the rating uh, for a quarterback rating so is I a guess, little up there. So what I want to get at is, because Brady didn't have the greatest numbers, but here's the thing that he was able to do. This is this is the edge that he has over Blake Bortles. He has that clutch factor, and he had a defense that won, helped win him championships. So, Bortles does have a defense that can do that, but he doesn't have that edge that Brady had. So I, I love your graphic here. I love how you, I love how you got so mad this week <laughs> that you took the time to make this graphic. Um, oh, fall two minutes. Now my question is, how did this? How does, does this compare? To other quarterbacks at the time. Now here's now I don't. Have, that's my counter argument. Right, and I don't have that, but I wanted to just show you the graph. What I'm talking about with this graphic is that we make fun of Blake Bortles, but if you compare him to who's considered the greatest quarterback of all time, where he won three out of four years in, in Super Bowls, the numbers aren't aren't much different. The number but the, ex, but the, the big the biggest number that came out of this was the record, because Brady had the 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 um, the people around him. To be able to help him succeed, and the records were something. And the thing I look at with this statistic insane. is that back in the day, throwing for thirty-five hundred yards was. I'll have to look it up, but I I really feel like back in the um, you had your Peyton Mannings. Yeah. They were still putting up crazy numbers. Peyton Manning would put up crazy numbers. Dan Marino would put up crazy numbers before. Okay, Dan before, Marino. We're not calling Dan but, Marino there. But most of the NFL quarterbacks in that era, in those first four years, this would be in a. This would be a. I don't want to say an elite. We'll look stat it up line. after the show because I, I'm curious. I, I think I, that's, that's a top. A ten, I think question. that's a top ten stat line back in 2003. He was not leading. He was not leading stats back in the 2001 and 2004 season. But wasn't it? It's, is it still top ten? I think it's top ten still, because this was the. This was the. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We shouldn't. We shouldn't just throw the trash away just yet. Let's let's look at. Um, you look at when you're comparing someone like Blake Bortles, you have the number the numbers do match up. And I also did this for another player as well. I did this for Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, I think, is one of those exceptions. His numbers were astronomically better than Blake Bortles was, well, but I he think, also had a defense that was very good. And that, I think was the, the, the best in the league. The career path that Blake Bortles is taking is the Alex Smith trajectory, where you know, as long as the franchise doesn't give up on him, well, everybody I was, think they'll succeed. You know, you because at, right now, he doesn't have any top wide receivers to throw to. He has a running back, and he has a defense. The best part is he's a mobile quarterback, so you don't necessarily need a crazy um, offensive line. 
to keep him in the pocket because that's part of his game is he's able to kind of um, to, to – uh, you know he he can run if he has to. Well, you look at so those first four or five years. What you need to do years. for him is you need to get him some 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 people, some people to throw to. And you need to see if this success can be sustained over another year. You know, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, bring in Eli Manning for the Jags. You got a guy who's twenty five years old. You got He's he has proven this year that with some stability he oh, can I love be it, okay. Dustin, you're coming around. No, you're coming I'm, around. I'm getting you a Jaguars jersey so I, you and your brother I, I, can oh, watch the games together. Let, let me clarify my argument here because I've seen, you know, I've watched two or three bit. Jaguars games for the last four or five years. I want to like Blake Bortles. I, I think really, a lot of people like, want to. I want Blake Bortles to be I don't a want, good quarterback. I want the Jaguars to lose this weekend. I like, don't want it to be because of Blake Bortles. Like, I'm not... I'm I not, want wide receivers to fumble balls. I want Leonard Fournette to... to Whatever, just not, I not, am, just get stuffed. I don't want Blake Bortles to be the reason that I have called Blake Bortles <laughs> trash a thousand times. Because I know of we have a segment devoted to it. Performances that I have seen of his, I would love to see him come around and be a good quarterback. It would be a lot of fun to see him come around and be a good quarterback. And you know what? This postseason, his completed completion percentage is there, but he's doing okay. He's making the throws he has to make. And when you're a game manager type quarterback, that's all you got to do. I think he's following the Alex Smith trajectory where in the first couple years of his career he had some terrible coaching staffs and now as you're starting to get a little out of that and now you're giving him the stability, he's slowly getting better. Alex Smith, you look at his stats from the 49ers the first four or five years, he was declared a bust. He is now a top 15 quarterback. Like, Ten. do you think he's top 10 quarterback? Uh, statistically he is. Well, okay, I, I, I would, I, I'm not going to argue that with you because um, I'd put him at like eight or nine. Um, but I mean, people are ready to hand him the MVP the first week of the season. But... <laughs> Yeah, let's let's use one week. Um, I, mean, no, I, th- I want to root for Blake Bortles. Is what I want to say. That's what I want to say. I'm glad that you're finally starting to come around. I'm coming you're around. Starting to like him a little bit. I want to like him. I want to like we, him. We, ed- we, we stop calling him trash for a little while because honestly, I think it's hurting his feelings. You can see it in the press conference. Yesterday in the press conference, I thought he was going to cry. I thought he was going to tear up a little bit. He's sick of people calling him trash. When guess what? He's in the AFC Championship and you're not. But Mike Sanchez made two AFC Championship games as well, so let's not forget that. But, but anyway, they didn't beat the Patriots in them, so that's a good thing. They beat the Patriots in one of those games. Not the AFC, not the AFC Championship. Yeah, okay. The Jets have not been to a Super Bowl since, I right. think, the man, Montana. No, not Montana. Um, but anyway. Broadway Joe days. So um, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, I did want to talk about the other games as well. Um, so we have uh, another game as well. The other game as well. Game. Um, I think it's no surprise that I'm going to pick the Patriots to win this game against Jacksonville because Jacksonville has to play not only a perfect game, but the Patriots have to play one of the most imperfect games they've played in a long time, probably since they lost to the Ravens in the AFC Championship. So My, my heart wants to pick the Jags, but my brain <laughs> wants to pick the Pats. I think you should pick the Pats because that's what um, your brain, I, your brain I, can I be smart I'm gonna, sometimes. I'm going to pick the Pats. Yeah. So we have Eagles and Vikings. This is such a weird – I wish I could have found the whole timeline of this. This is Nick Foles, uh, you know, verse. I say verse because they don't actually face each other. Uh, versus Case Keenum, who were both on the roster for, I think at the time, the St. Louis Rams, and then, or the, or was it when they went to L.A.? Was it last year they went to L.A.? They were both on that roster. They're both no longer playing for the Rams, but now they're playing each other. The in Jeff the Fisher is a terrible coach bowl game right. we have this weekend. Okay, oh. Jeff Fisher bowl game. I like that. Okay, the, so you have these two players that are going up against the, each I other. I survived Jeff and Fisher's regime both bowl Both Nick Foles and I think Case Keenum have made jokes about this. Like, yeah, I bet you guys didn't think this was going to happen. No, like, it's been really interesting, you know. I am fully on the Case Keenum train. I, I you know, I look. I, all year, Dustin. Why did it take you all year? Why did it take it you took, to the NFC Championship to be on the Case I Keenum train? I picked him last week. I picked him last week. Oh, one time. Good for you. And I said that, hey. All I, year you've just been telling me how Case Keenum will eventually fall. And look I've, what he's done. I've he's thought, brought his team you know to the what? NFC Championship. They've, he's, he's made people forget about Teddy Bridgewater. But also he had that interception in that game that if he doesn't make that miraculous play, that interception that was intercepted by the guy, which is, which is hilarious. The interception that was also, that the guy whiffed on the tackle that like, like if that doesn't Well, he didn't happen, want, and it's funny because after all said and done, they said that he didn't want to have a pass interference which, call, which at this point looks pretty damn good, don't it? Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think, I think if it's one second, you take the pass interference because Vikings field goal kickers in the postseason are not known to be clutch whatsoever. Um, but I just, you know, Case Keenum. Let me do a whole segment about, four, is it Forbeth? Forbeth? I can't. You want to get, you want to get me a Vikings. I can make a new graphic to show you how good he is. Give me a Vikings kicker graphic next week. It's not week. happening. Um, I just, you know, I want, I, I, Case Keenum has always been the guy for me who, like, 
when he had those couple starts with Houston a couple years ago, I really would have loved to see him. You were excited about it. I was really excited right. about it because it's like Case Keenum, hometown boy. And then he went to the Rams, and I think Jeff Fisher is just the black hole of coaches. Well, that's and why he's not a coach anymore. It's you know I'm excited. I want. I'm picking Minnesota this yeah, week. I'm picking I'm Minnesota, Minnesota as well. Train. I'm I'm kind of bummed it's not at home because I think they just they they bring so many problems to the Eagles. However, we're going to apparently have it's going to look like a dog pound. At, uh, in Philadelphia because of the 40,000 German Shepherd masks Which that were purchased by the Eagles. As, because as, they're as the as underdogs. Brown fans, if that works Because they're them. the underdogs. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. It's going to be a sight to see, but nothing in my mind, and I'll wrap this up in the last couple of seconds, nothing beats for me Case Keenum doing the skull chant clap at That's, the end of that game. That was almost chilling. You don't see that in movies. That was so good. That was so probably good. my favorite football Kudos movies. to that cameraman to zoom in on Case Keenum and slowly zoom out and show that entire crowd behind him doing the exact same thing, fantastic stuff. That's going to do it for us here on Huddle Up. Dustin, I don't believe we'll be back next week. I will try to be back next week with a panel of people. Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's going to do it for us on Huddle Up. He's Dustin. I'm Paul, and we'll see you next week.